Chris, thank you very much. Tomorrow, WIFF4 airs our latest chronicle, Remaking the Mills. All this week, we're giving you a preview of some of the stories. It might seem that the textile industry in our area is in decline, but Stephanie Trotter introduces us to some people who are still spinning optimism and profits in the industry. First shift is starting at Greenwood Mills. Jay Self walks the floor, just as his uncle, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather have since 1908. It's a way of life. Life started here for Jay at 16. He spent summers opening cotton, running cards, and slashing yarn. It's a source of pride. I mean, we have fourth generation employees other than myself out there. This is as much their way of life as it is mine. And we're talking tens of thousands of lives. Greenwood Mills once employed one third of Greenwood. The company operated 19 facilities in four states and offices abroad. It was the largest gray goods producer in the U.S. with customers that included Levi Strauss. Obviously, we're a lot smaller than we used to be, so we've had to downsize out of products that the major retailers have taken to countries like Bangladesh and Cambodia and China. As business contracted, the mill wove its way back to what it spun for success during World War II. You have the Marine Corps desert fabric, each day, associates cards, spin, and weave about 120,000 yards of military-grade fabric that makes its way to Uncle Sam or industries with stringent uniform requirements for safety, wear, and tear. Jay's also learned his voice must be as strong as the fibers he produces. If you're not in Washington lobbying on your behalf, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Jay also thinks of his heirs, who one day may walk the mill floor. He hopes to hand off a thriving business. Going forward, I see growth and opportunity and increasing production. Greenwood Mills is one of 188 textile mills still operating in South Carolina. Well over half continue to spin cloth. Of those, 62 are right here in the upstate, including Kent Wool in Pickens County. We've got a great group. I didn't have to come in and recreate the wheel. They knew exactly what they were doing. Kim Kent never planned on running the highest certified premier wool manufacturer in the U.S. She took over the 179-year-old company when her husband, Mark Kent, unexpectedly died. The attorney is now hands-on wool. What we do here is in a lot of ways an art. We have um, a lot of hands-on touching that goes on in this process. We will never fully automate. We don't want to fully automate because what we provide to our customers is something that feels really good. Like most surviving mills, Kent wool is cut back, but what it lost in square footage and manpower, it's found in quality. The team diversified its customer base and now spins performance fibers for hiking, biking, and cycling. Wool has become really a preferred fiber for performance goods, and that's our niche market. One of the innovations whirling from these spindles, high-end socks, an idea that came to Kim's late husband after he played three straight days of golf and his feet hurt. He sort of gets out the back of a napkin, draws a sketch, and comes in and talks to his team and says, okay, I want to make the best sock, and I don't want to start with how much it costs us to make it. I want to start with what makes the best sock. PGA pros now wear the socks, in addition to surgeons and security guards, endurance athletes, and grocery store clerks. Like Jay Self, Kim Kent sees growth and opportunity reeling off the loom. When people ask what I do for a living, and I say that we have a family business in textiles, and they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know anyone still did that. Um, and, you know, my response is, Texels are alive and well. Texels are alive and well. A life extending and spinning into a new era. And that was Stephanie Trotter reporting an all-new Chronicle Remaking the Mills airs tomorrow night at 8 o'clock right here on WYFF4.